Hello, everyone. Welcome to today's webinar. I'm Catherine Dold with CNEN, and I'll be moderating today's event. This webinar is titled Empowering Small Molecule Drug Discovery by Automatic DEL Screening and is being sponsored by Wuxi Aptek. CNEN works with sponsors to identify topics of interest and value to CNEN's audience and consistent with their mission to provide news and analysis of the chemistry enterprise in a timely, accurate, and balanced fashion. During the webinar, you can adjust the size of the slides on your screen by grabbing the lower right corner with your mouse. If you need technical assistance, please look for the Help widget at the bottom of your screen or type your query into the Q&A box. If you get disconnected during the webcast, please log back in according to the instructions you received earlier. You're encouraged to contribute to the success of this webinar by asking questions at any time during the presentation through the Q&A box on your screen. Our speakers will answer them at the end of the presentation, and as your moderator, I'll be posing as many as time permits. Any questions that we are not able to get to in today's broadcast will be answered by email after the event. Please note that CNEN does not endorse any company products or services that may be mentioned in the webinar and that the webinar will be archived at CNEN online after the event. The presentation today is being sponsored by Wuxi Aptech. Wuxi Aptech provides a broad portfolio of R&D and manufacturing services that enable the global pharmaceutical and healthcare industries to advance discoveries and deliver groundbreaking treatments to patients. Through its unique business models, Wuxi Aptech's integrated end-to-end -end services include chemistry drug CRDMO, or Contract Research Development and Manufacturing Organization, biology discovery, preclinical testing and clinical research services, and cell and gene therapy CTDMO, or Contract Testing Development and Manufacturing Organization, all helping customers improve the productivity of advancing healthcare products through cost-effective and efficient solutions. Our speakers today, all from Wuxi Biology, are Wenji Su, PhD, Executive Director, Head of the Early Discovery Platform, Wei Zhen Shui, PhD, Director, Head of the HIT Finding and Informatics Department, Early Discovery Platform, and Chang Lao, PhD, Associate Director, Early Discovery Platform. Dr. Su received her bachelor's and doctorate degrees in biology from the Hong Kong University of Science and Technology and Emory University. She worked at GlaxoSmithKline R&D China and at Wuxi Aptech on cellular assay and screening methodologies. She is now leading the early discovery platform in Wuxi Biology. Dr. Shui trained as a computational biologist at Shenzhen University and at the Chinese Academy of Sciences. He worked at Wuxi Nextcode and then at Wuxi Aptech on bioinformatics and product development, including both genomic databases and DEL-related informatics platforms. He is now leading the HIT Finding and Informatics team in Wuxi Biology. Dr. Leo graduated from the State University of New York at Buffalo and subsequently worked at the University of Pennsylvania and at Merkin Company. He had profound experiences in nanoparticle-based drug delivery systems and biosensors. Since joining Wuxi Aptech, he has been working on the automatic solution and microfluidic platform for DEL selection systems. I'll now hand the program over to our first speaker. Hello, everyone. Today, I'm very happy to share with you our recent update of the Dell platform. We would like to share with you how we empower small molecule drug discovery by automatic Dell uh, screening. Dell, as known as DNA encoded library, is a, t is a powerful screening technology that uh, is applied in target to hit stage to speed up hit finding process. By applying Dell technology, there are several advantages. Uh, one is that it allows researchers to explore vast chemical space with this DNA encoded library. And second, uh, it allows for parallel condition, uh, screening condition design, 
which allows for um, you know, screening for multiple compound profile in one campaign. And third is that DAO is suitable for uh, novel targets because it does not need extensive asset development due to its nature of affinity screening. So this is particularly useful when there is no available um, you know, tools or no available asset format that's um, for the new target. And uh, with this with this advantage in place, uh, researchers can find the, uh, the the compound that could be useful for the next stage of development. So one of the highlighted case of the Dell technology is that um, is that uh, one of the recent collaboration from our platform has reached R&D stage with less than three years after the screening, which is uh, quite remarkable con um, considering the just how short this development workflow has been. Just in case that you are not overly familiar with the DAO technology, a typical DAO is constructed by a simply and poor combinatorial chemistry. So the basic principle is that whenever you, you know, run one cycle of chemistry by adding a new react, a new building block to the existing core, uh, and then we would um, add ligate, a piece of DNA corresponding to that you know, added compound. We sit and then we'll pull everything and split again and allows for the next round of you know chemistry and ligation. So with this construction construction workflow, we can easily you know produce up to like billions or or even larger libraries within two or three cycle chemistry. And this is really a very efficient process that we could make like a lot of compound within a very short period of time with just like very little labor. Um, consumption. And what's better, uh, what's cool for this technology is that uh, with the attached barcode for each of the molecule, you can actually um, decode those barcode and then figure out what the molecule identity was at the beginning. And this allows for the pooling of all the compound together in one, in one tube and then runs for selection. The selection process of a DAO technology is very simple and straightforward. It adopts the uh, affinity-based screening, which is similar to when you run a product assay, where you just immobilize your target protein on a solid surface, and then run the libraries through the protein, and then whatever uh, from the library that binds to the protein will remain on the protein, and the rest of those would fall off. And after several rounds of you know, wash, and then uh, we would retain the binders that was coming out of the screen, and then um, and then those um, you know binders will then be ampli the barcode of that would then be amplified and sequenced with next gen sequencing, and then this allows for you know decoding of the original structure of the binder, and then we can move on to resynthesis and key co confirmation with secondary assays. So this easy setup of the Dell screening is actually quite uh, friendly to um, comparing to other of the heavy loaded screening technologies. It allows for benchtop process and with a very fast turnover. A typical cycle of the screen will be completed within like a week. So uh, going back to our platform, so we have been um, developing this platform since 2017. And so far we have been um, building this into a very I would say comprehensive platform. So here, what we're showing is a summary of the publications. It's actually a snapshot of, of the publications we have done in, the, in recent years. We actually have more than that. And uh, this is just to show that how um, advanced and how developed in terms of technology, this Dell, the Dell platform in Wuxi has become. And, um, and our library design, do we have our own you know, insight into it? So we do uh, believe in the balance between the library diversity and the drug-like profile. So at the, uh, when we designed the library, we uh, went through the, um, the hot course in the market and also from our existing knowledge. And then we um, picked the DNA compatible functional group and then designed our self-designed uh, six, over 6,000 different scaffolds. And with that, we will combine it with um, over 35,000 different building blocks and through our toolbox of uh, diverse DNA compatible chemistry 
and then we will come up with our design of the library, and then we will filter or optimize the design by um, using informatics tools. But after enumeration, we will then look at its profile of the of the library compound, whether it's diverse enough and whether it has a good enough property. And then after that filtering, we will then decide what library will be, in, you know, put in the making and put in the selection, you know, selection collection. And so this is our current main collection of the DNA coded library in the in the Wichita platform. So we do have a a, a pool of a library that's over uh, 60, uh, 46 billion members of 147 libraries. We call it Dell Pro, and uh, we also have another a set of library with about 10 billion in size and 58 libraries in total. We call it Dell Light, and an another separate set is Dell Open. So as you can see that the drug likeness and the you know the distribution of the property has been evaluated and we are picking the balance set of the and you know as balanced as and also at meanwhile as diverse in the set as we could. Um, so and then uh, going to the um, the workflow of the um, of the selection, actually in our most premium service model we call it Dell Pro. This is just uh, this is how we do the um, the, the 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 selection process. Um, so after the protein is ready, we'll actually we'll run like a QC and sometimes you know even biophysics assays to evaluate the protein quality, and then we'll run through some of the standard um, work uh, standard options between uh, before you run a dial screen, uh, which is similar to when you want to, when you want to set up an assay, but this is much you know easier compare or much simplified comparing to like say the functional screen. So we will run a bits capture assay to make sure that the protein, the target protein, can be captured properly by the bead in the selection condition. And if we do have the available tool compound with the DNA conjugate, we would put it into the um, you know testing run and see whether this two compound would perform as expected in the, in the condition design. And after everything is set, we'll move into the affinity section, and then the selected compound would then be amplified and sent through next-gen sequencing, and then the sequencing result will be decoded and data will be an analyzed. And here is the, and this is the step where we come up with the list of compound um, that will be, you know, um, send it to the next step of evaluation. And the next step typically would involve either on DNA or off DNA validation. Sometimes it goes in parallel. So the on DNA validation would include um, remaking of the library, uh, remaking of the compound with the DNA conjugate on, and which would re would repeat the process of the library production and allows for you know all the byproduct, all the like intermediate, all the you know. Um, um, you know the compound that you know would actually be part be part of the library to also become um, present through this uh, process, and then after the after the on DNA production uh, compound production, it will be sent to a specialized assay format we call it on DNA ASMS, which will be used for in determining the actual um, you know compound structure that binds to the um, to the to the protein, and then that helps to elevate some of the false negative possibilities. Um, that was, you know, actually the like I said, the byproduct or the partial product that binds to the to the target during the selection. And um, sometimes, um, typically, this step will be performed before the off DNA synthesis, because uh, the on DNA confirmed hits will then be, you know, resynthesized without a DNA conjugate and then goes to a secondary assay. However, sometimes these two steps could go together uh, to make the timeline shorter. And for off DNA validation, which is uh, pretty standard, we just make the compound without a DNA tag, and then the compound will be sent to secondary assays like biophysical or biochemical assay. And uh, in case of, and sometimes there will be downstream structural biology involved for optimization of the hit, and then um, and then um, and then like, like downstream medicam efforts as well. So apart from the regular Dell collections. Uh, what I want to highlight is that we have, in the past few years, we have also been, you know, applying Dow technology or developing Dow technology to more, you know, trendy areas that's in the market or in the field. One of those would be covalent um, screens. So covalent uh, hit have been has been recently becoming um, a thing in the in the field, and uh, Dow can actually also be part of the 
a very useful tool to develop covalent compounds because they don't want a lot of you know readily available covalent libraries available for you know um, present for the regular screens. So Dell, with its nature of like making a huge library in a very short period of time rapidly, was actually coming in handy in those um, you know in those um, in those programs. So we have actually published one of our test case, uh, POC case using the covalent um, that Dell library and also like a specialized optimized covalent screening workflow, and which has been published on a SLAS discovery. Um, I think it was in 2021. And then, um, and then uh, we also had uh, put together a new generation of the covalent Dell library that's ready for screening. And it contains over 1.6 billion different library members. And it's mostly consists of a two cycle and three cycle chemistry, which would provide, we believe, the best um, you know, balance between diversity and um, property. And then uh, it actually has like a wide selection of different warheads, which will be quite useful uh, in terms of um, we want to profile like different combinations of the of the you know the compound um, in combination with the COVID with the electrophiles, and that would actually generate lots of uh, useful SAR information for any of the you know downstream medicam effort. Apart from covalent DELs. Um, one of the recent interests in the field is to use Dell for cyclic peptide discovery. So there are actually a lot of interests in the field to develop cyclic peptide drugs um, to either be uh, orally available therapeutic modality or become the delivery reagent, delivery uh, warhead for larger molecules such as oligonu oligonucleotide or antibodies. So through a recent collaboration with one of the pioneers in the field on natural product, we successfully demonstrated the uh, application of Dell technology in producing microcyclic peptide libraries, as well as uh, run a generate, you know, successfully uh, screen and find the neutral um, protein complex inhibitors. So one of the benefits of doing the Dell selection over the more traditional approaches, such as phage display or MR display is that the construction of their libraries allows for uh, more chances to incorporate a natural amino acid as well as uh, different selections of backbone. So it comes with a uh, higher diversities in backbone uh, selection because the library is constructed through chemical reaction. Also, the screening process of Dell is um, it's not, it's not to amplificate multiple rounds of amplification, amplification, so it does not bias towards the highly charged um, large or po uh, and polar um, peptides, but it will have better chance to uh, yield the hits with, a new, with neutral charge and a smaller or um, less polar, which would, be, which would have a better chance to fit a profile or of a, a already available peptide therapeutics. So um, with that, uh, we actually, through this uh, collaboration with UMP, we actually generated an article that was uh, recently published on ACS Medicam um, journals, Medicam letters. And um, hopefully um, with, with now we put in more effort in constructing new peptide libraries. We're hopefully um, enabling more uh, researchers that could find uh, novel hits in, this, in their, in their um, drug discovery campaigns. For a quick summary, we have become the leading Dell platform in the market. For the past couple of years, through the past couple of years, we have worked with over 1,500 cl clients globally, and we have screened over 500 different targets across 14 different target classes. And for most of the project, we were able to identify binders, and many of the project. Um, our client were able to take the hits into downstream medicam campaigns or even to development stages. Uh, we're really proud to have this platform established and it has enabled so many different uh, clients in the field um, to complete or to generate uh, a useful hit for their drug discovery uh, programs. And apart from regular DELs, one of our long-term vision is that we believe DEL should be the technology that everyone could, should be able to access without too much of an investment upfront, so that 
with that, we would be able to enable more and more effort in the drug discovery field, and there will be more and more chances for people to come up with uh, new, um, you know, drug candidates that could benefit to the entire population. So uh, my colleagues would then be introduce some um, of our um, recent updates and recent um, news of the of the Dow, you know, uh, kit platform, which we. Uh, came up with in the in 2019, and we pioneered in this concept, and we have been very happy to see you know pans out so successfully in the past couple of years. Thanks for Dr. Su's introduction about the Dell platform. I will continue the sharing about the more detailed self service mount within WeChat Tech. This slide shows the roadmap of the self service mount named as Dell Kit, which was first day launched in 2018 in the open platform. Different from conventional one-stop solution of the Dell service, in this kit mode, the Dell libraries will be packed in one kit and the kit will be delivered to the user's users and the users can follow the detailed protocols to finish the screening by themselves in their own lab. The users, after the screening was finished, the samples can be sent back to Wuxi's facility for downstream processing and sequencing. Within the open platform, we are aiming to build the data exchanging environment together with academia researchers through the Dell technology. In the coming next year, that is 2019, the second generation launched with the first commercial available self-service kit named as Dell Lite. We implemented the more standardized sample processing progress together with automation capabilities. And uh, we also built the self-service analysis web page that can help the users to make the final call more easily by this kind of semi-automatic or semi-interactive web page. In 2020, the third generation was launched with the extension of using Dell data together with the machine learning models to expand the application beyond the Dell chemical space. The first the QC checking method was introduced. The users can follow the protocols and uh, easily tell whether there is any contamination included during uh, the screening experiment by a uh, Piece by simple PCR experiment. The fourth generation was coming along in 2021. We are focusing on to improve the drug likeness molecules in both the open and the Dell light. In this fourth generation, the total diversity of this Dell open reached up to 4.2 billion together with 10.8 billion in Dell light as well. In the same time, that's also enhanced QC methods by implementing the QC dipsticks. Users can easily using these methods to tell whether it's contamination and do a very same quantitation in 15 minutes. In 2022, there's also other stuff coming along with this Dell kit, such as this Dell link, the first the covalent Dell kit la launched together with its Chrome S math, which enables the users to do the on DNA validation in house and a data related service named as Dell Vision. With these portable tools we launched since 2018, more than 1,000 clients already benefit from this self service Dell kit mode. And this, there's also a lot of good collaborations re results, such as some papers and some other successful stories derived from our platform. Here's one example showing, showing the researchers using the Dell Open Kits to find the very good small molecule binders of this Israel like subunit Kit 4. In this research work, the, they also implement the fragment screening together with this Dell through Dell Open. And uh, both methods will generate very good results. And uh, there's more fragment and uh, the Dell extension. There's also more Medicam work related with the uh, fragments and the Dell molecules found. At the same time, there's also 
other publications, not only in the drug discovery field, but also in these kind of antivirus or antibacterial or even plant science fields, which also comes along with the vision to implement the Dell technology, not only for drug discovery. And here shows what is included in our Dell case, such as these online materials, sample submission forms, and the QC dipsticks mentioned before. There's also other necessary reagents we provided, such as the SSDNA, which can block the non-specific bindings during the experiment. And then the important part that is the Dell library itself, in each kit will provide a standard four valves together and uh, also eight valves for the sample returning to Wuxi. And uh, in the middle shows the detailed workflow, such as the collaboration extension to the machine learning application together with Schrodinger. And uh, that's more than that's a lot of experienced researchers already benefit from the Dell screening. And uh, we noticed that there is continuous requests from the experienced users that want to do more beyond the self-service screening, such as they also there's also a need for them to do the sequencing or decoding by themselves. And at the same time, they also want to know more about the whole data, such as the negative data can apply the machine learning models to their to their own screening data and to dig into the data analysis more by themselves. And uh, with that kind of observations, we launched the new release, we named as the Dell Special Edition. In this edition, this is also a new Dell libraries we built with still with the focus of drug likeness and uh, different from the previous Dell kit mode such as Dell Lite, that's only one time payment. Even you can start the purchase of this Dell kit from a single tube here. And also the whole library formula together with its tag and the building block information also with the direction route are fully open to the clients. And it is also quite suitable or compatible to the automatic systems which will be introduced by Dr. Liu Su. In this special mode, there is no need to unlock the structures with any additional fees. And we, because due to the openness within this special edition, there is extended self service, not only limited to the screening itself, but also the downstream sample processing together with the sequencing part or the decoding part. The users can directly have the access to the whole data of the post selection samples. And also there's also companion software that is coming along with this special edition that can help the users to hands on the related tasks by themselves. And here's a very quick snapshot of the libraries features we included in this special edition. As said, it is a fully new libraries. It is contains the 1.3 billion sized compound, with, which is also reaching to more extensive chemical space. That's more than 1400 scaffold covering diverse bioactive cores together. And uh, you can notice all the libraries included in these special editions are coming from the three cycle library, which can provide more drug-like molecular properties. And uh, there's totally 27 reaction schemes, including all 85 different sub-libraries. And uh, in the bottom left, we show also show some representative structures here which shows very promising structures for drug discovery. We can also tell the drug likeness from the property distribution in the right panel, such as the molecular weight, log piece, height of bond donor, acceptors are listed in these plots. Each color presenting here shows one single libraries, 
And then in total, there are 85 different plots accumulated together to show the overall performance here. As I said, there are companion software that is also coming along with this self-service mode with this special edition. In this decoder, we name as the automatic, this automatic decoding tools are named as decoder, which is built with this powerful UI interface. This software can be easily run on the PCs such as or even laptops that can start to analyze the Dell screening sequencing data from the raw data format faster queue. And uh, there is no need for a very comprehensive environment setups or, or command lines to facilitating the data deconvolution or decoding methods here. You can see some as said, there's a, a companion software. So this is the first one for automatic decoding from the raw sequencing data format FASTQ. With these decoders, users can easily use the PC or even laptop to run the decoding of the Dell screening raw data. There's no need to, to set up the, the complex environment or use the command line to do the data analysis. There's a lot of modules also come along with this software, such as this here, there's M MD5 check, which will do the integrity check of these large FOSTQ files during the file transfer from the sequencing vendor. There's also the major module named as decoder, which will convert the raw DNA tags to the corresponding structure information, and also count the raw data we named as copy number. Within this software, there's also a lot of like QC steps, such as the faster QC can monitor the quality of the sequencing data as well. We paid a lot of attention to the data security from this software. You can easily run it along in your own environment and that keeps the output locally. This also enables the users to do the self-service decoding with our Dell Special Edition. And uh, of course, there are advanced users that can use their own scripts to do the decoding by themselves as well. After the data was decoded by the decoder, we also continue to use this his pilot, which was launched last year. And uh, there's uh, also a big upgrade about this platform and uh, serve as an intelligent Dell data analysis platform to prioritize hits from the decoded data from the faster queue. To use this platform, we just need to upload the decoded the raw data to the web page and the, and then the data will be loaded together to the, the data will be uploaded to the HISCO pilot and uh, there will be a very intuitive way to do the logic definition, library selection, such as chemotype exploration, and then finally to nominate a hit from the screening data. We don't need to worry. It is also compatible with this high throughput analysis as there's always multiple screening approach can be achieved as there's always multiple screening conditions that will be implemented. Users can also use this physical pilot to do the comparison between different conditions, such as illustrated here as an example showing four conditions here. Well, that's also mul multiple illustration plots are also can be easily achieved, such as this line plot showing the performance between each other. There's also continuously development, such as this permission or access management that can help to do the do it securely. As I said, this kind of self-service is also compatible with the automated device, which will be introduced by Dr. Liu in the next session. Thank you. Wuxi AppTech is working on building a standardized Dell selection workflow for our customers. Based on the feedbacks from our clients, this is especially important for those 
who want to try DAO selection will hesitate to do so by their limited access. As a drug screening experiment, the general workflow usually includes the steps of sampling preparation, program setup, DAO selection, and data interpretation. Among these steps, the DAO selection is a critical process for high-quality data acquisition. And this is also the step where deviation happens due to the high level of manual intervention. For most of wet lab experiments, contamination control, operation control, and human error control are highly correlated with the quality of the final results. With the help of our standardized selection product, these challenges faced by our customers could be controlled in an acceptable range. Combining the cutting edge fluidic system with Wuxi Aptac's internal Dell selection experience, we are able to propose our automatic Dell selection platform, Dellman. This is a specially designed device from the very beginning for Dell selection and related service. A touch screen is coupled onto the main working station and the concise user interface simplifies the experiment setup. The automatic Dell selection platform could take over the whole selection process from the scientist and decrease the human intervention to the minimum. Dellman makes great breakthrough in four aspects. And with the aid of this automatic device, a Dell selection could be performed in a stable, smart, standardized, and simple way. Stable. The system could stably run Dell selection experiments with no significant difference in experiment replicates. Smart. This system could perform the selection process automatically, and it is compatible to a variety of Dell inputs. Standardized. The whole selection process is standardized running with our protocol. Uh, protocols, which are designed by our years of experience. Simple. Uh, the whole process is very user-friendly. Scientists with very limited Dell knowledge could also perform the experiment. Dellman could, uh, could automatically perform Dell selection and generate stable data. We collected a serial of data from two identical Dellman and compared the performance with our experienced scientists. In the positive compound selection, there is no significant difference between the data collected by the two devices. Considering the data were collected on different days or different batches. When we analyze the Dell library selection, the small molecule collected after selection from the two devices are highly similar in structures. Dellman showed good repeatability of molecular copies and structure diversities. The, uh, the comprehensive selection performance 
is comparable to a skilled cell screening scientist. As an automatic platform, Delman is very compact in size. It's about the same size as a PC. The software installed in the control panel could centralize all the commands. And the mechanical parts inside the workbench could perf uh, would perform the physical process. Wuxi Aptech is also working on breaking down the barriers for Dell selection and providing the access of this technique to every scientist. Dellman is friendly to almost all open access libraries, including both our internal libraries, such as Dell SE, Dell Lite, and also customized libraries. The automated system could free the scientist from labor work. Based on our previous selection experiences, standardized selection protocols are embedded in the software system. The scientists just need to choose the protocols corresponding to their experimental materials. Then the Delman will perform the selection process and collect the samples for you. There is no need to worry about the deviations from the selection protocols during selection. We are also working on the protocol development and adaption from our manual practice. In our previous practice, we have specialized Dell products to meet the diverse needs from industrial and academic customers. And we also deployed self-service data tools, such as a decoder and heat copilot for NGS decoding process and post-selection data analysis, respectively. Um, as an automatic selection platform, Delman could perfectly fit in the workflow to uh, standardize the selection process and generate reliable data. Um, we successfully put the missing piece back to the whole standard workflow. Now our customer could experience the whole process, self-service screening with standardized packages. There is no need to worry about the improper handling of the sample, deviation from the protocols, or difficulties in getting the potential heats out from our data. Each round of Dell selection experiment only involves three steps of manual handling of the samples. Limited contact of the sample could reduce the chance of contamination and the risk of human error. The three steps are place it, press it, pick it. Place it load the sample and the selection targets into the disposable cassette and place the cassette on the workbench. Close the deck, then the cassette is locked on the deck and ready to start. Press it, choose the selection protocol in the software, and then a start button will pop up. Press it. Pick it. After selection, 
Delman will stop automatically. Then open the deck and pick up the samples. One round of the selection is completed here. Then the sample could go for the next round of selection or NGS as needed. With this comprehensive selection platform, we are able to overcome the challenges faced by our customers. Each condition of the selection is separated by the cassette. The disposable design of the cassette could significantly reduce the cross-contamination from handling multiple samples during one experiment trial. The platform could perform the experiment automatically, and the system is strictly following our pre-designed protocol, making sure that high-quality data could be achieved every, after every selection. <laughs> Um, the highly simplified sample handling procedures could dramatically reduce human errors in the experiments. The system is extremely friendly to scientists with limited Dell selection experiences. This automated Dell selection platform, Dellman, could be applied in the area of traditional pharmaceutical companies, innovative pharmaceutical companies, and also academic labs. This standardization and automation trend led by Wuxi AppTech in Dell screening is particularly beneficial to the researchers who wish to use Dell as a regular tool for small molecule discovery. Dellman significantly reduced the, depend, uh, the dependence on experimental skills and could potentially broaden the applications of Dell techniques. There are more potentials and applications to be explored. We are looking forward to cooperating with you. For more information and cooperation opportunities, please feel free to contact us. The contact information for global districts are listed here. Thank you for listening. Thank you to all of our speakers for a great presentation. We have a few minutes left for questions. Uh, just a reminder to our audience, you can submit your questions in the Q&A box at the bottom of your screen, and any questions that we don't get to today will be answered by email after the event. Okay, let's get to our first question. Uh, how long does each round of selection take using Delman? Who'd like to take that one? Uh, hi, I will answer this question. Uh, so for each round of Delman selection, it usually takes two hours, uh, including our one hour incubation uh, time. So this is our standard pr protocol. Um, if you have a, a so if um, you have other uh, selection protocols, we can also adjust this time depending on uh, the target and the selection method you have. Okay. And Thank when you. should, <clears throat> excuse me, and when should the Delman selection process be stopped 
to proceed with data analysis. Oh, uh, that's me again. Uh, so, usually the selection process uh, will be stopped depending on uh, the total molecular, molecular copies we collected from the selection. Uh, based on our standard protocol, uh, usually uh, we, we run the qPCR after the selection, and when we see the uh, molecular copies drops to a range from uh, 10 to 6 uh, to 10 to 8, then that's ready for the next step. Okay, thank you. Thank you. And since Delman uses a fluidic system, how is sample contamination avoided? Um, so we designed this product to avoid contamination. Uh, we have our special designed cassette for each condition. Uh, we run each condition separately, one by one, uh, and this is a disposable cassette. Uh, all the materials will be uh, maintained in the fluidic system inside the cassette. There's no interaction with the mechanical part inside the workbench. So uh, this is how we avoid the contamination. And we also have a UV light system. Uh, after running the selection, we can turn on the UV system uh, to uh, decontaminate. Thanks. Okay. Thank you. Uh, next up, does the DNA affect the compound binding at all? Uh, okay, I will take this question. So I think this is a good question often be asked uh, by for the DNA encoded library technology because uh, we conjugated a DNA barcode to the uh, classical small molecules. So I think uh, in general there are certain uh, DNA binding proteins that will be affected, but we do accumulate a lot of experience uh, to dealing with this kind of DNA-oriented DNA binding from both uh, wet lab approach together with this dry lab approach, uh, such as uh, we can use some uh, SSS DNA to minimize the, the, uh, the non-specific binding oriented from its DNA level. So, so I think you can also see that uh, we also get some uh, good success, successful stories from the trans ta target class as transcription factors. Yeah, uh, following our experience, this also shows our evidence that we can deal with this kind of DNA binding efficiently. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Our next question, do you validate novel chemistries for on-DNA chemistry to access unique compounds? Uh, yeah, I think for this question, the quick answer is, of course, yes, because we do have the uh, chemistry team to do the developing of these novel chemistry reactions which are compatible from the, um, from the on-DNA level. Uh, this is the continuous work. You can follow our uh, publications recently and uh, there are always novel reactions being developed and uh, applied to our library production. And uh, I think uh, this is not only uh, the only part we, we, are, we are trying to accumulate or gain insight into this expansion of these libraries. At the same time, we are also following the chem informatics way to do the predictions, such as what kind of, uh, uh, from, the, from both the building block level to the reaction level to make sure, okay, our novel libraries are always expand the chemical space rather than uh, always repeat it again in the, in the similar structures. Thank you. And how do you decide when on DNA validation is necessary? Mm, okay. Well, this on DNA validation, I would say, I serve as a very Adele specific validation method, as introduced by Dr. Su before. Yeah. So this this on DNA method, uh, uh, there are like two two typical approach. That is the first approach. That is like after Adele screening, we can do the validation directly using on DNA validation because uh, the on DNA synthesized validation serves as a 
very cost effective and high throughput in a high throughput manner. Uh, in other way, for example, you can easily test around 100 compounds in a batch in a very efficient way so that you can have a higher chance to get a, a validated hit with this large amount. And uh, in this, uh, that's another way that it's like if we met with some uh, off DNA uh, validation this uh, failed and we want to troubleshooting what is the possible possible reason and uh, this on DNA validation method can also serve as a troubleshooting method to to trace back whether there is any byproduct could be the potential findings for during the Dell screen. Okay, thank you. Uh, next up, are there certain targets that are not suitable for a Dell screen approach, uh, for example, polymerases or nucleoside-based targets? Uh, okay, so I was, I think I I would uh, answer this question in this way. So because uh, we typically we are using Dell technology to be looking for the hits for for the targets, while the hits is uh, in the in the in the field of these small molecules. So I think uh, Dell serves as this novel technology to for the small molecule hit finding, and uh, we do we all know that guys that is uh, like undroppable targets that is hard to be targeted by small molecules. So this, uh, this kind of uh, targets uh, would, uh, uh, would have a lower chance to be success in Dell, of course, because this is the nature of science. And uh, and, uh, in, uh, and I think, if uh, as mentioned, for such as this polymerase, uh, if it is oriented with some false positive during the Dell screening, we already gained a lot of experience as explained before. So I think we are confident to say that uh, if there is like uh, the likability of this target is not that bad, that we, uh, the overall success rate would be quite reasonable. Okay, we have time just for a couple more questions. Uh, what is the price of the Dell Special Edition along with its companion software? Ah, okay. So as for this question, uh, for this Dell Special Edition on MS Dell SE, so. Uh, first, this companion software is free to go if we put, if you if purchase this uh, Dell SE kit. And uh, as, as we introduced also in the presentation, this Dell SE can also be purchased uh, uh, using some flexible model. Uh, so if you are interested in this, uh, we, we can, our colleagues will follow up with you about the detailed price uh, by email. Okay. Uh, two more questions. How much protein is required for screening? Um, okay, uh, I will answer this question. Uh, you, it depends on how many conditions you need for the screening. Usually, each condition uh, needs five microgram uh, for selection for each round. Okay. And our last question, how large is the selection library? Mm, okay. So I think we introduced a lot of uh, library collections <laughs> during this presentation. So I would uh, uh, have a quick explanation for them one by one. So currently, we have different models, such as this uh, Dell Pro mode. We have more than 46 billion size uh, library put together. And uh, in the same time, we have this self-service mode named as Dell Lite. Currently, that is around 10 billion. And uh, for the Dell Open Kit, it is 4.2 billion. And we also introduced this new Dell Special Edition. It is also comes along with this 1.3 billion uh, in a, in a uh, kind of smaller size, but I think it still has a flexible mode. And uh, in the same time, there's also other modes, um, uh, Dell specific libraries introduced by Dr. Su before, such as this uh, peptide Dell, which is more than two uh, two hundred billion sized. So I think in overall the the, the, the advantage of Dell that is has this huge uh, size, and uh, and we we need to find the proper libraries based on the based on the specific needs. All right, thank you. That's about all the time we have today. Do any of our speakers have any final thoughts you'd like to share? Nope. Okay. Nope. Go ahead. 
Okay. Oh, sorry, I said nope. <laughs> <laughs> thank you again to our speakers for a fascinating presentation, and thank you to our participants for being a great audience, and ON24 for technology and production services. And thank you, Wuxi AppTech, for the sponsorship that made this interactive webcast possible. Be sure to check CNEN or CNEN online for information on upcoming webinars. For CNEN webinars, I'm Catherine Dole. Goodbye.